right, welcome back to yet another edition of Survive to Thrive with me, Dr. Todd. Uh, again, just, you know, working through um, tips and tricks for you um, to uh, get out of this mode of just surviving a day. And again, just jumping into a world up above, a world that thrives your world that thrives. And this is kind of a continuation of a three-part series. So if you haven't listened, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be really good. I did, it wasn't designed to be a three-part series of this podcast, but it just came together that way. And you got to go back uh, three podcasts. This would be the final uh, podcast in, in, the, in this series. And um, no real name of, of the series other than loving yourself. And today's topic is learning to love yourself, but more specifically to date yourself, to get to know yourself. So we've been talking about this concept of what you see in the world is a reflection of who you are. What you see in the world is a reflection of who you are. You see negative, you see bad, you see everything. You flip through Facebook, you flip through Instagram, and you're automatically judgmental. You're judging yourself. Ouch, that was the kick in the gut earlier. I'm not going to spend much time on that and the aspects of then moving you and giving you action steps to get you out of this concept. And today's final step is to actually date yourself. Like court yourself. Date yourself. Figure out exactly what you are all about. So the concept of taking care of yourself is a weird, weird thing. You know, for years, years... Um, I myself put myself behind, put myself behind everybody else, even my patients. I would give, I would give, I would give. There were times in my past that we ran an office that would actually not make enough money to even support myself. And it was times like those that we just started to build resentment. Resentment at what? Resentment at the world or all these types of things. I'm not getting paid for what I do. I deserve to be paid, but we give it all away. Just give way too much. And I realized that you can't give what you don't have. And this is the concept for you today. Unless you're investing in yourself, unless you're pouring into yourself, you cannot pour into anybody else. This is uh, uh, one of the biggest teaching points that I do with moms in the office is we come at them from a standpoint of it's okay. It's okay to take care of you. And if you're not, you need to start immediately taking care of you. And you can see physically moms just like, it doesn't even fit. If it doesn't even fit, if you're not watching me on YouTube, you can see uh, see that concept of like somebody squirming in their own skin. It just it, they're not okay with it. Why? Well, because we've been taught in a society you must sacrifice yourself. This goes back to religious, um, I guess, if you will, cultish kind of. We're supposed to give it all away, and it couldn't be anything further from the truth. Meaning that you're supposed to invest in yourself so you can invest in others. Even the principles of love, you cannot give love that you do not have. You must get love. You must connect. You must do things for yourself. So when you're thinking about this, what are you going to do for yourself? What kind of dates are you going to do? I'll give you examples of what I do. I exercise. Eh, Okay. It's part of what I do daily. So it can't really be a date, right? Maybe a second exercise. Maybe if I feel like it, I need to go for a long, long run by myself. And that could be a date. What about a massage? What about a combination of a lunch alone when you actually just write and have fun? Maybe you do something like I shoot. I love shooting. I love figuring out how um, how bullets work in different conditions and rains and temperatures and things like that. That's a date. What about flying? I love to fly, so I go out and fly. If you're not a pilot, why don't you set a date for yourself every week and become a pilot? You see, it's investing in yourself and expanding. I spend time playing the guitar. Not that I'm good at it, but it expands for me another avenue that I can actually, you know, start to see things differently. And this is the whole concept. Once you start dating yourself, you start to get to know what you like. It's hard at first. It's like riding a bike and a bike falls over, right? Put training wheels on it and you're still wobbling. It's hard at first because you're like, I don't know what I would do. And should I even do this? I mean, I got my, my schedule's full. Women, if it's you, how about just getting your nails done? How about just doing a pedicure, manicure? How about just something that you drive to Salt Lake City? That's close for us in this city. Salt Lake City and do a shopping spree. I don't know. Whatever it makes you thrive, whatever it makes you feel like, almost like there should be guilt attached to it, <laughs> you should go do it. Meaning like I'm taking all this time and spending this money on myself. I should feel guilty. 
All right? So drop the shame, drop the guilt, and go do it. And date yourself. And see, what happens is you'll discover when you're taking care of yourself that you're more apt to take care of other people. You're more apt to actually invest in others. And you actually can start taking care of the people who you're taking care of a little bit better. A little bit better. You're starting to pour in. You have more to give. One of the most tragic things that I see in a life is when people stop giving or they stop staying relevant to be able to give. I mean, I got nothing else to offer. I have nothing else to offer in communications and skill set and mindset. And the conversation stop. The relationship starts to go south because that person has nothing more to give. And they stop being relevant because of stories that they likely have stacked. You guys all have these people in your lives. It's because of stories that they've stacked that said that they weren't good enough or they couldn't do this or they're too old or whatever the story it was. They stopped becoming or they stopped being relevant. And part of you not being part of that game to stay relevant in this life and have something to offer, offer your family, offer your friends, offer in somebody else, is to actually invest in yourself. You like reading? Pick up a new book, get a series of books, whatever that is, to create some space for you. That's fine. And again, drop the shame and guilt. So the tip and the trick, this is a shorter one today, but what are you going to do? Because this culminates off a three-part series of seeing yuck in the world, turning that around and realizing you're seeing the yuck in yourself, and then boom, seeing the beauty in the world as you invest in yourself and do great things. I've mentioned this quite often. If I'm going to go to a city, I'm going to eat. Not only eat, I'm going to dine. Not just to consume massive amounts of food, but I'm going to actually consume great food and great wine because that pours into me. It's an investment in myself. I don't look at it as like, oh my God, did you see how expensive that was? It was like, no, did you taste how amazing that was? And it's an investment in me, me, and it does something for me. It does something for my mindset, and I enjoy just like taking a deep breath of a beautiful flower for a while. So again, the tip and the trick today, where are you going to invest in yourself? Again, comment on, the, on YouTube, comment on our Facebook or Instagram, and just say, hey, I appreciate this. This is what I'm going to do. I'm going to invest in this avenue. For me, I'm standing up today and I'm going to put this in. Now, here is the next level of that. Don't just do it once. Repeat. Do it, invest, repeat. Invest in yourself and repeat. How often? Weekly. So this is scheduled. You schedule a date night with your significant other, wife or husband, and you schedule a date with yourself. It's awesome. Because you, more you invest in yourself, the more you find who, out, who you are truly deep inside and what makes you tick. And you allow others to see what you enjoy. You allow others to see close to you that, uh, who you are. And the more confident you become who you are, the more actually you stop what we started this podcast series with. Looking at and comparing yourself to others. Because you don't really care. I do this because I like it. I don't do it because society likes it. I do this because, and then you start to see the, the beauty around you. You start to see the beauty in yourself. And in that beauty that you see in yourself, you start to hold up a different mirror that brings a full circle to this podcast series. A full circle, you start to see a mirror. And in that mirror, instead of seeing hate and anger and guilt and shame, you start to see beauty, you start to see joy all around you. And then you run a life above thriving and peace and happiness. You're not just surviving a day anymore. You get to see things differently. Choice is up to you. What are you going to do to date yourself? What is it specifically you're going to go do? Write it down, schedule it in, let everybody know. That is the tip and the trick for you today. In love and light, bring you truth, 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 truths every day. And make a huge difference in your life. That's it. Invest in yourself, and we'll talk to you tomorrow.